Good evening friends, welcome back to this video tutorial. In this video, we are going to see about the digestive system which is continuation of the part 2. So here we are going to see from stomach, actually yesterday we have seen up to stomach. So in stomach what will happen, the food will be digested, that is partially the food will be digested. The partially digested food is called as chyme. So this chyme will be entering from stomach into the small intestine. So small intestine consists of three regions. The first region is C-shaped and it is called as duodenum region. So duodenum region is from here to here and after containing the duodenum region you will be having the jejunum. Okay, The jejunum is the long coiled portion of the small intestine. Following the jejunum the last part is called as ileum. So the first is called as duodenum and then jejunum and then ileum. Ileum is highly coiled portion of this small intestine. In small intestine only the complete digestion will be taking place. The chyme which will be entering from stomach into the duodenum will be guided by the special tissues called as muscles called as that sphincter muscles. So it will be like this. So it will open and close and open and close. This will be muscle like this. So that muscle will be guiding the transport of the partially digested food from the stomach into the small intestine. Here the pH will be 1.8. So it is because of the hydrochloric acid. So what happens? The food will be entering from the stomach into the small intestine through the duodenum region. So here what happens? Here only the major two glands will be participating. The digestive glands. Already the first digestive gland which is present in your oral cavity, buccal cavity that is salivary gland. So here two other glands are there. One is called as pancreas and another is called as liver. So liver is the largest gland in their digestive system. So here what happens, the liver will be participating in the production of bile juices. So bile juices consist of bilirubin, biliverdin, bile pigments and some other bile salts will be there as well as cholesterol, phospholipid salts will be there. But there will not be any enzymes will not be there in this bile juice. Only bilirubin, biliverdin, some bile salts will be there and cholesterol and phospholipids will be there. So what is the main function of this bilirubin and biliverdin is for the emulsification of the fat. So when fat is as such, it cannot be easily digested. So that will be converted into small globules. Like small, small particles will be converted. The conversion will be done by this bilirubin, biliverdin by juices. So after conversion only, it can be easily digested by the lipase enzymes. So this will be activating the lipase enzyme also. So what happens, the produced bile salts and bile juices from this liver will be traveling through the duct that is called as hepatic duct and through the duct it will be going to this gallbladder. So gallbladder will be storing the bile juices and concentrated in this location only. So from here only through the ducts it will be transferred to the small intestine. So from here it will be transferring through the small intestine in the duodenum region. Through the duodenum region only the bile juices will be transported to the small intestine. So it enters the duodenum. Similarly here the another duct is here it is from the pancreas. So pancreas also secretes the pancreatic juices. So it consists of many enzymes like trypsinogen, chymotrypsinogen, amylase, lipase, nuclease and numerous enzymes will be there. So all these enzymes will be participating in the complete degradation, complete digestion of the food which is coming from the stomach. So that is the role of this pancreatic gland. So from here also pancreatic juice will be coming, from here the bile juices will be coming. So these two juices from duodenum will be entering into the another region called as jejunum. So after entering into this small intestine what happens here inside this jejunum ileum regions further succus entericus. So this is called as intestinal juice. So this is called as bile juice and this is pancreatic juice and this is called as intestinal juice which is secreted by the intestine. The other name is called as succus entericus. So this consists of numerous enzymes like maltase, dipeptidase which further converts the simple comp like complex into further simpler compounds. So what happens? Here all these enzymes will be involved in the complete degradation. Later that complete degraded food which is converted into small products will be absorbed by our body through blood and will be transported to all over the body. 
So as I said in mouth, what happens? The enzyme which is called as amylase converts the the carbohydrate starch polysaccharide into disaccharide that is maltase for example so later coming into the stomach the proteins will be digested and after entering into the small intestine for the complete digestion will be done so trypsinogen chymotrypsinogen will be involving in the digestion of the protein molecules peptides and proteases whereas this amylase will be involving in the digestion of the further carbohydrates those are not digested in mouth will be digested in your intestine and then lipase so this lipase will be for the digestion of the lipid that is fats and then nuclease will be for the digestion of the nucleic acids like DNA and RNA will be digested by this nucleases so later in the we have maltase is the maltase what that will do means that will degrade the maltose maltose is a disaccharide di means or two so glucose plus glucose will be there so the maltose will be acting by this maltase what happens maltose will be broken down into glucose plus glucose so this glucose is a simple monosaccharide that is simple sugar that will be easily absorbed by our blood and it will be transported to the all parts of the body so similarly dipeptidase so dipeptidase di means two peptidase means it will be broken down into smaller smaller amino acids the complex protein will be will finally degrade into smaller amino acids these amino acids also easily absorbable our by our body and it will be transported through the blood similarly what happens lipase will be there this lipase also converts the fats into fatty acids and glycerol which will be uh, taken by our lymph nodes actually lymph will be there this that is called as lacteals special lymph will be that is called as lacteals it is present in the small intestine it will be involved in absorption of the digested fat materials from our intestine so likewise carbohydrates also will be uptaken by our body fats also will be uptaken proteins also will be uptaken our body in the complete digestion so here another major thing you have to keep in the small intestine you will be having small projections will be there the projections are called as villi so this in this is the major role plays a major role in the absorption that increases the surface area when villi is there the surface area will be more so absorption will be taking more so this plays a major role in absorption in small intestine so after all the absorption the undigested food materials will be there so that will be entering from the small intestine into the large intestine so this location where the small intestine and large intestine is joining connecting that is called as cecum so this location is called as cecum so from cecum what happens the colon will be continuing so the colon is called as the large intestine from here to here so this is ascending and this is transverse and this is descending and it is called as sigmoid so at last you will be having rectum in rectum only at last the waste products will be stored that the fecal matter will be stored for a particular time later what happens it will be coming out through the anus as a fecal material so here in large intestine what is the major role played means the drugs the minerals and the water some extra water will be there all those things will be reabsorbed by our body in the large intestine at last what happens the fecal matter will be going through this way and it will be stored in the rectum and it will be coming out through the anus so this is the overall process taking in this small intestine as well as in large intestine here the major role will be played by this liver and pancreas as well as intestinal juices so these enzymes will be helping in the digestion of the food into the very simpler complex molecules which will be uptaken by our body thank you friends thank you for watching this video